Hey guys, what's up? It's Erica. Maybe you should put a hat on. Sorry. Hey guys, what's up? It's Erica. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with David and we're going to be talking about our jobs. I got some comments on my video um, just asking what my job is like. I really feel like that as a PE, my day-to-day -day job has not necessarily looked like it would for most PEs. For me, I basically came in near the end of a project. The construction process is completely over. David pretty much came in at the beginning of his project. So I feel like that people have commented and asked um, to for me to talk about my job and what it's like to be a PE, but I really feel like that I haven't had the quintessential PE experience yet, so I don't really feel like I can talk about it yet. Um, but David has, so um, yeah, I brought him here just so we can go over like what day-to-day -day roles look like. Project engineer, um, to my best summary, would be you're the detail person, you're the information guy or gal. Uh, good sense. And your responsibility is to know um, the, the tiny things and you're getting into the nitty gritty Whereas as you step up, um, assistant project manager, senior project engineer, even um, project manager, bigger you get picture, into a bigger picture, and you're dealing less with the smaller details. So you're the information person. You're supposed to know those details. Um, you're handling and controlling the information that is going between the contractors, your subcontractors, the architects, the engineers. You're the information person again. Um, and then you're also organizing that. And a huge part of our jobs is staying organized. Starting off on the right note, being organized is really important because I still look at stuff from a year ago and it's really important that I know how to find it really quickly or if someone else is looking for it, they can just give me a quick call. But that is a huge part of what we do is staying organized and managing and- um, Document control. Yeah. Also, I mentioned this in picture. my construction management video where I talked about my major. Um, just because like engineer is in our title, we're not certified. So we didn't go through like any certification for engineer. I know people who um, start in this role that were business majors mm -hmm. or other types of majors. You don't Civil, have to be, yeah. Business, yeah. You don't have to be in an engineering RT. major. But I, I do like to think that as a project engineer, the engineer is referring to the coordination um, and the effort that takes kind of refers to the engineering because just like an engineer I'm gonna to go to our structure engineer with a question and they're gonna have a response um, so being the project engineer you're kind of that person for the subcontractor it's almost like you're filling that role even though you're not taking any of the liability or the real um, problem solving you're just helping facilitate the process we just finished um, our concrete there's some smaller things that we have to finish up um, we're drilling and epoxying some rebar for uh, like ramps, curbs, anything like that. If you were to drive by his job site, it'll look like there's a building with no like outside on it, Finishes. and you can see every floor is poured. That's what he's saying with like the concrete's finished. You get the skeleton, um, the concrete skeleton. Yeah, and then next they'll probably enclose it all, and then they'll work on the interiors. My responsibilities now, um, because concrete is in this phase of closing out, similar to Erica, they're trying to get off of the project. The project's not done, but I'm gonna start doing punch lists, which typically happens at the end of the project, uh, but I'm gonna do it just for concrete. So that's looking for finishes. Um, in other words, is the concrete smooth? Are there a bunch of cracks, craters um, going through and notifying the subcontractor of the issues that we find. So really a lot of what I'm doing is I'm going through, it's called QC punch list, um, taking quality control, making sure that everything's built the right way. If it's not, I communicate that to the architect or the structural engineer. And um, I'm gonna present to them what I think should be done, and they're gonna tell me yes or no. And typically, I'm gonna tell them what's gonna be the easiest for us because I wanna save time, I wanna save money. And sometimes they'll come back and they'll say, nope, you're, you're not gonna be able to do it like that. Yeah, so I'm communicating all this to the engineer of record, the structural engineer, and they're giving me fixes. Um, and then I'm coordinating that work, making sure that the right person is on site to do it, making sure they're doing it at the right location. It's a lot of planning. It's a lot of um, looking in the drawings right now, a lot of communicating with people, um, and it's a lot of executing and getting the work done. Yeah, so like how we kind of touched on this at the start of this video, 
Um, basically, the construction is completely done with my project. Um, we built four dorms, basically, and we've been at the project for probably like eight months at this point. Um, since the project hasn't finished and students have moved into the dorms, we're basically just taking care of warranty items that come up. Basically, we have guaranteed the buildings for one year. Just like um, Yeah. Right. And so also pretty much every subcontractor that we had out there guarantees their work for a year after um, people have moved in pretty much. Let's just say at this point, we get a lot of calls that fridges are broken or maybe there's- Pipe is burst. Yeah, like a lump in the carpet. Yeah, we get the information from the people managing the buildings. Um, they tell us, then we either can fix it ourselves. Um, we have a carpenter with us at our job still um, to take care of stuff that comes up. Uh, but if not, if he can't take care of it, then we call out the subcontractor. So it's a lot of emailing, scheduling with the, with the subcontractor. Also, coordinating. yeah, coordinating. We have to coordinate with the people managing the dorms and they're gonna reach out to the students. We don't directly talk to the students. So yeah, it's just a lot of being the middleman, I think is really the best term for the job is being the person who's going to tell other people information. So as a project engineer, it sounds like we're both, um, where it aligns, really in charge of quality control. Yeah. For me, that's studying the drawings and looking at, you know, a subcontractor submitted shop drawings, a submittal, and making sure that they're building the right thing, that that's their plan. Um, and then hers is more or less the back end of that where it gets installed, but then in something goes wrong, it's faulty, and her responsibility as quality control is to coordinate um, the work to fix it. Yeah. I already described what my day-to-day -day activities were, um, but more of like a timeline of my day-to-day. -day. I don't show up to work any later than eight. I try my best not to. I think it'd be totally different if COVID was not a thing. I think if COVID was not a thing, um, I'd have to be on site as soon as the work starts, which is 6.30. Um, I try my best to get there at 6.30, but uh, clearly not a huge effort on my part because I love to sleep in. I usually show up, I've been getting better, around 7.15, typically 7.30. It's earlier than most of the other office staff, and by that I just mean the other project engineers, the other project managers. Um, all the field guys are getting there as soon as the work starts, which is 6.30 for us. It's about to turn into 6. And then throughout the day, it's sitting in front of the computer, of course, what job doesn't have that? And it's, again, just looking at the drawings, doing quality control. Um, it's going out in the field and doing the same thing. It's looking at what was actually built and having my iPad. I'm looking, okay, yeah, this is per plan. It's good to go. If it's not, um, then that's when I start making my phone calls. I start emailing. Um, I talk to all the different parties. That's one thing I really like about being a project engineer for a general contractor is um, as much as I get into the details, I am still a little bit bigger picture than any subcontractor would get into the details. I'm communicating with the subcontractors. I'm saying, hey, this is messed up. Um, obviously, you guys need to fix it. There might be some headbutting. And then, you know, it, coming back to the trailer, not being out in the field, um, staring at the computer more. And then all the time, I'm having meetings, whether it's coordination meetings. Um, or safety meetings, anything like that. We always have a daily huddle, so we go over what is happening um, for work that day, whether they're gonna complete it, whether they're gonna be delayed a little bit. And then by the end of the day, I typically stay later than most people. I'd say most people are getting out of there around four. Um, the field is getting out of there closer to three, 3.30. Um, so everyone else is gone by like four, 4.30. I'm usually out of there around five or 5.30, sometimes as late as six. So I think to end this video, I think we should both say what the best and worst parts of our jobs are. David, you wanna go first? I think for me, the best part is um, kind of like the problem solving and the effort that goes into that, whether it's communicating with the subs or um, you know getting on a call with the architect or engineer. I really like that part of it. And I like to, I like to talk and I like to listen. So that part of the job is great for me. And then another great part, there are a lot of great parts, um, is like a year ago, I was just staring at a computer and now all the hard work and the hours that I put into it um, is literally concrete. You know, there's a physical 
goal. There's a yeah. physical um, result, and yeah. that is very rewarding. The worst part, there's two sides to all of it. The problem solving, um, <laughs> problem solving could be a really hard part because some people aren't responsive. A lot of the times, I don't know what to do, so I'm relying on other people. Um, and when you start relying on other people, is when it can become a little miserable because you're on their timeline. But there is some conflict that comes from dealing with the people. I was pretty much gonna say kind of the same thing. For me, I would say that the best part is that your job changes so much um, depending on what stage you are in the project. Um, it is great that you can spend time sitting at your laptop and at your desk and you also can go out in the field like I could not spend eight hours sitting down all day I yeah I think everyone needs to get up and walk so I love that it's part of our job to get out and look and um, it breaks up your day a lot and I would say that the worst part similar to what you said is the problems for me I feel like it's the worst part because sometimes when everyone's coming to you with problems you aren't noticing all the things that are going well. You're just constantly being told about what's going wrong. And so that can sometimes feel really frustrating and like you aren't seeing your hard work and like the good stuff of it just because I think like most people are gonna come to you when things aren't good versus when they are good. Uh, when you're constantly dealing with like, oh, this doesn't look right and this needs to be changed, it can just feel like endless and yeah, just really tiring and some and kind of negative because people are just coming to you for the problem. Sorry guys, David got a call from his dad that he needed to take, but we are pretty much done with the video. So I'm just going to be doing the outro. Comment if you guys have more questions about what a project engineer day-to-day um, -day job looks like. I hope that we kind of touched upon the basics and answered some like general questions that you guys might have. But again, let me know if you guys have more questions or other things you want to hear us talk about. I just want to give a little shout out to David. Thank you for being in this video with me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow in my next video.